Yes, Jim. How are you going to spend your snow day? Is this what we're going to do all day, Kat? So, today is a snow day. We haven't really had any big snow falls this year, I think, if I can remember. I think this is the first day that all the schools have shut down, again, as far as I can remember this year. Fortunately, snow days when you're a grown-up are not quite as fun as when you were a kid. Like, I don't have to shovel anything because I live in a city, so that's nice, but like... I still gotta do work, but I can kinda go with my own schedule. I can work from home. I've got tons of stuff to do. I'm gonna head out to the gym now. I'm trying to make a vlog for the first time. I usually just sit in front of my desk and talk, but I figured what the hell, I'll use this day to try doing an actual vlog. I will probably try to work in a bookshelf tour because that is something else that I've been putting off. And yeah, I gotta plan some experiments, plan some cloning, write up some experiments, so tons of fun. But yeah, first I'm just gonna go to the gym while it's still possible. So So I just left the gym. It was pretty packed, I guess. That's where everyone is going for their snow day. He's like not supposed to be fed for like five more hours and he still has food in his dry bowl. Like he has all of this food to eat, but what he really wants is his wet food, even though he's not supposed to get it for like a whole bunch more hours. So my kitchen is kind of a shit show. I am gonna finally eat. I ate like way too much way too late last night because I stayed up until like 2 a.m. watching a K-drama and now I'm finally hungry, especially because I went to the gym. So while that's happening, I guess I will also clean a little bit in here because it is disgusting. Watch a lot of trashy reality TV while I'm doing all this. So this is my chicken congee. This is pretty much my go-to breakfast, especially in winter. Um, it's super easy to make. You can just do it in the crock pot. This is my breakfast companion. So these were some of the things that I had originally meant to do today until it turned out that it was going to be a snow day. So I will cross all this shit out and plan my actual day. So I've started color coding my to-do list and I just do these with my midliners. These are the zebra midliners. They're really nice highlighters if you don't like um, super, super bright. I find them sometimes a little bit distracting so I have been using these. So usually I do my to-do list on this side and then over here is kind of where I do my more like my, my journaling. So I can take you on a tour of the journal. So this is my Hobonichi Teko Cousin. Um, this is an A5 size planner. Um, I mentioned this actually in my bullet journaling video. I was debating buying this for a while and I actually didn't at first because I kind of liked having the more loose structure of the bullet journal, but I got to a point where I just decided I wanted to have something with uh, days and months and weeks that I could plan ahead and that was one of the things that was harder for me with the bullet journal. So the cousin has a paper cover but I actually put it in a plastic cover that came with a Muji notebook I bought a while ago um, and it's a nice cover. I mean it gets the job done. I like the look of the cousin so I prefer having this cover um, to one of my cloth uh, Kokio covers. So the first set of pages is this kind of yearly overview. Um, it has each month and each day of the month, and you can fill it in with different things. Um, so if you zoom in a little bit, you can see all the days. And then it gets into the months, which is just like your standard month calendar. I like the size of these pages a lot. I like the A5 size notebooks and planners in general. So the cousin has these weekly pages which I think the normal Hobonichi does not have and I love these weekly layouts a lot. Each of the days has these times 
um, so that you can really schedule everything out. There's like a um, place at the top for our list. And these are what my days usually look like. I do my planning out here and all my journaling like this. Get to the end, they have kind of all these extraneous little pages. I haven't really used too much of them yet, um, but they're there. I obviously can't read any of this because it's in Japanese. So I use this cousin um, as a companion to my Editor 365 Stology Notebook. Um, I like both of them a lot and basically this is for all my planning and journaling. This is where I write out notes and outlines and lists and stuff and I, I'm not in love with having two notebooks but because there's just so much to put in each one it's been working for me so far. I might do a more in-depth review of the Hovenichi at some point. But Uh, so I finished some of my work and I think I'm now just going to take a break to eat dinner and then I will start working on this vlog, editing it, seeing if I can get this to work, um, maybe if I have time get to the bookshelf tour that I keep on thinking I'm going to do. But yeah, right now I just got um, some ramen cooking. You're not in control of that shit, bitch! Let me tell you something! Let me tell you something! You shut the up! So behind me is my bookshelf. My bookshelf tour is pretty, I feel like my bookshelf tour is probably pretty low key. I don't, I've mentioned this before probably a lot, um, I don't like to buy books too much because I don't want to buy too many books that I don't like. I just both in terms of budget and space and because I know I will have to move at some point. I have not, I have been trying to avoid buying too many books. Um, I usually buy, I'll buy ebooks of romances that I want to read, but otherwise I mostly check out books from the library. The books that I have behind me are pretty much all books that I really love. There are a few exceptions. There are a few books that I haven't read yet um, and will be getting to, but yeah, otherwise most of these are books that I love and probably stole from my parents' house, or and by stole I mean my mom begged me to take everything. But yeah, so I will kind of do a very quick overview of the shelves and then I will break down uh, the books that I have into different categories slash genres and go through them a little bit more so you can see them in a more cohesive way. I'm not going to do all of them just because some of them I couldn't quite figure out where to group them. I actually did not get a bookcase until this past year which is kind of dumb because hopefully I'll be moving within the next year or so but I just got sick of having all my books around on the floor and super disorganized so I got some cheapo shells off of Amazon and they've been working pretty well. Um, so over here I have some books that I borrowed from the library along with a book that I'm borrowing from one of my friends so it helps me make sure that I don't lose them. So as for my books themselves I keep them pretty much in alphabetical order. I'm um, going from one shelf over here. They're also still pretty much in alphabetical order. Um, the obvious exception are my hardcovers. I keep all my Harry Potter and related books uh, grouped together and then some more hardcovers as well as textbooks and cookbooks on the bottom here 
to keep things stabilized. These are, noir, these are my noir books. I really, really love noir. I wrote my English thesis in college on working women in noir, and I just really love the language. I love the characters and the settings. I've read all of these, I think, except for the top two. Laura is probably my absolute favorite. Um, my thesis was actually about Mildred Pierce and Laura, which are great. They're kind of different maybe because they're so much more centralized around women um yeah these are my epics i don't know if you can tell but i have two copies of the odyssey i have no idea why um you can probably also tell that the bottom copy is from high school and is filled with the stupidest notes i've ever seen but i guess they help me understand the odyssey so I mentioned in my 25 bookish facts about me video that when I travel I like to collect copies of Jane Austen's uh, Pride and Prejudice and so these this is my very very small collection so far. This is the one that started it. This is from Hong Kong so I definitely cannot read it um, but I basically bought it because the cover is so gorgeous and that really helped kick it off kick off this whole Pride and Prejudice collecting thing. So these two are from a recent trip. The one on the right is from uh, Prague and the one on the left is from Bucharest. They were weirdly really hard to find. So these are my gothic fiction books. It's not, I feel like I should have more books. Really what I'm missing is The Picture of Dorian Gray, which is one of my favorite books. Um, but yeah, these are all from an English class that I took on gothic fiction and really, really enjoyed. These are my graphic novels slash comics slash manga. I've got some trades of Miss Marvel and Hawkeye and East of West on the bottom. I've got some graphic novels on top. Um, and then Sailor Moon and Sailor V. I still haven't actually read Sailor V. I have to. And one of these days I'm going to complete my Sailor Moon collection, but I need more money first. These are my collections of poetry. The Saul Williams is actually, I think I stole that from my husband. I think they're signed. Uh, most of these I've talked about. I'm still reading my way through, I'm still getting through Milk and Honey. One of the things that I think I learned from some of these collections is that it is better to read some of these collections more slowly rather than kind of marathoning your way through the words. So Milk and Honey has been kind of a slow, pick it up when I'm interested kind of book. So here are my two Bengali pride authors. The top is Rabin the Natakor, who I've mentioned before, is a really, really famous Bengali poet. He was the first non-Westerner to win the Nobel Prize in Literature, and Bengali people love to talk about him. On the bottom I have a series of mysteries by Shatajit Ray, who is a really, really famous Bengali movie director, um, who decided he wanted to write kind of a Sherlock Holmes inspired series um, that was more geared towards quick kids and that is the fellow the mysteries. One of his movies that I really loved is based on one of these mysteries. It's called Shonarkella uh, and it's really good. For some reason I need to have both a complete Sherlock Holmes and the classic mysteries of Sherlock Holmes. I don't know why I have both of these uh, but I, I should really have more. One genre of books I did not realize I was slowly starting to accumulate is books about women in the 60s or written by women in the 60s. So I, I read Slouching Towards Bethlehem, which is my first Didion book uh, this past year, and I really, really liked it. So I bought the White Album, still haven't read it. Valley of the Dolls is great. It's by Jacqueline Susan. It is so trashy, but it's just amazing. Here we've got my fantasy section, and obviously I have all of Kushiel's Dart, the Fedra trilogy. I also have the first book of the Imriel trilogy, which I'm not crazy about. I don't think I've ever actually finished it, but these these three books in the middle are books that I will never shut up about. Um, on the left I have some Neil Gaiman. I really love American Gods. I haven't read Smoke and Mirrors yet, but I will at some point. And then I've got some Tolkien, which I enjoy. Um, it took me the movies to get to, into the books. These are my nonfiction books. I have Ed Young's book, Ad Contained Multitudes, which I still need to read. I have my one of my favorite science books of all time, The Emperor of All Maladies. I also have uh, Being Mortal by Atul Gawande, which I have to read, but I got this book at the Boston Book Festival, and so I got it signed by him, so I'm pretty psyched about that. Next to that is Superficial by Andy Cohen, which I also have signed. I haven't read the Andy Cohen book yet, but I'm pretty psyched because I love people who want to name drop. These are my non-Harry Potter YA. I guess they're also all fantasy slash dystopian, whatever. I have a Scott Westerfeld's Leviathan series, which is really awesome if you're looking for a steampunk kind of thing. I love the Artemis Fowl books. Hex is 
this trilogy that like I read in high school and I don't know if anyone else read it but I really really liked it about it's about like these mutants who have the ability to interface with like computers dystopian story that probably in retrospect would be really super cliche I haven't reread it recently so there's a chance I wouldn't like it as much now but yeah it was my favorite for a long time. So these are all of my Harry Potter slash Harry Potter adjacent books. Uh, I have a mix of the British editions and the US editions. Um, basically because I bought my grandfather the British ones in India and then he decided not to read them and I inherited them from him. These books have definitely seen their share of wear and tear. The Chamber of Secrets copy I have is like almost falling apart. Well, I am back in my chair where I usually belong. Um, this was fun. I haven't really done this kind of vlog before where you record yourself throughout the day, I guess. I'm used to the sitting down and talking thing. Um, it was kind of different. I It made me interact with my surroundings in a really different way. Um, looks like tomorrow the weather should be fine enough for us to all go back to lab. It's supposed to snow again this weekend, so I, oh, I'm i not sure what that's going to mean for all of the work I had planned for Saturday and Sunday, but we'll find out. Thank you for watching, especially if you made it all the way through to this point. Um, I hope you enjoyed the bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed the little quick overview of the Hobonichi Teko cousin. Um, and if you didn't enjoy either of those, I hope you at least enjoyed my cat because he is the best. Next video will be probably back to my usual fare. I might do this again. Um, We'll see, and yeah, bye.